Welcome to the video tutorials of mechanisms by Mechanismaler. Every day our Earth experiences two high tides and two low tides due to the gravitational pull exerted by the combined effects of the Moon and the Sun on the Earth. The Sun's also has tidal effect on Earth which is almost 44% of the Moon's effect. Tides are a complex phenomenon which has a tremendous effect on the Earth and the Moon. Not only do tides cause the water levels of our oceans to go up and down but they are also causing the Earth's rotation to slow down with time. When dinosaurs went extinct 65 million years ago the day was 23 hours and 30 minutes long and we all know that currently each day is 24 hours long. Tides are also causing the moon to move about 4 centimeters away from the Earth each year. The moon will continue to move away from the earth until the day the moon is at a fixed location in the sky or the earth and moon are tidally locked. However, before this can happen the sun will become a red giant and swallow the earth in it. To understand how complex the tide phenomenon is, let's assume there is a planet as large as the earth deep in space far from any celestial body exerting any force on it. Since this planet does not have a heat source the water on this planet would be as hard as a rock. Let's assume that some mysterious heat source on this planet is keeping its surface temperature above the melting point of the water. Let's further assume that due to this melted ice there are large oceans on the planet as shown here. Since there are no external bodies around this planet, there would be no tides on it. As you can see in this top view of the planet, the ocean levels are the same everywhere. Now let's assume that we placed a moon-sized object as far from this planet as the same distance the moon is from us. With the addition the ocean water on this planet would now be pulled toward this new moon-sized body, which I will refer to as a moon from now on. However, this situation would not last very long because the planet pulling on the moon would in fact cause it to crash into the planet, which I will refer to as the Earth from this point forward. To prevent the Moon from crashing into the Earth the Moon should orbit around the Earth. This will cause the gravitational pull of the Earth on the Moon to be a balanced with centrifugal force generated by the orbital rotation and the Moon. As you can see in this smaller version of the Earth and Moon system animation, the bulge on the Earth oceans follows the Moon while it is orbiting around the Earth in almost 29 days. However at the same time the earth and the oceans with it rotate around its rotation axis every day. You may think that earth rotation axis is passing through the earth center of the earth. However it is much more complex than that. In actuality, the moon is not orbiting around the earth. In fact both the earth and the moon are revolving around a common point which happens to be a point very close to the surface of the earth and not the center of the earth as you can see in the animation here. This phenomenon is akin to a parent swinging their child around in a circle. To balance the child, who is lighter than the parent, the parent will need to lean backwards. Similarly, the rotation of lighter moon around the earth cause the earth rotates off center, just like the parent leaning backward. The rotation of the earth and the moon around a fixed point between them causes the ocean waters on the other side of the earth to be pushed away, by centrifugal forces, from this rotation center. This creates a second bulge on the ocean surface 180 degrees in the opposite direction of the first bulge. This is akin to rotating a bucket of water in a perpendicular direction from the earth. When the bucket is further away from the earth, the water is pushed away from the earth however the bottom of the bucket holds the water in place. In the case of the second bulge, the earth's gravitational pull balances the centrifugal force exerted on the bulge. This is where things become complex and interesting. Now we know why there is a second bulge opposite of the first bulge. This was a mystery for me for a long time during my studies and before the internet age. Now real complexity begins with far-reaching consequences. The two bulges we discussed so far were shown right on the line joining the Earth and the Moon. However, this is not the case. Actually, due to the rotation of the Earth the bulge moves a little bit ahead of the line joining the Earth and the Moon. Since the ocean water is carried away from this line by the rotation of the Earth. 
This misalignment of the bulges causes the Earth rotation to slow down with time. It also causes the Moon to move further away from the Earth which will be the subject of another video. There is one more thing to complicate this system and that is the Sun which also exerts a gravitational attraction on the Earth, as we said earlier as much as 44% of the Moon's attraction. Now let's look at the combined effect of the Moon and the Sun on the ocean levels on Earth. Here, in the bold grey and red arrows show the direction of the Moon and the Sun with respect to the Earth. As you can see, this is a very complex motion with far-reaching consequences on the Moon and the Earth. Finally, here is the Earth, Moon, and the Sun on the sky with exaggerated tidal movements of the Earth's ocean surfaces. Please notice that the Moon is always showing only one face of it to the Earth because it is tidally locked to the Earth. Thank you for taking the time to watch our video. If you enjoyed this video and found it to be useful please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. We appreciate your support.